The immediate past attorney general of Lagos State, Adeniji Kazim San, after a momentous tenure in office, spoke recently on sundry issues, including the raging controversy on remote court hearings. He says the judiciary must be willing to embrace technology. This debate is currently on the front burner. To help us make sense of this and, you know, give us an update on how it's been with virtual courts is Mitchell Agatise. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. A pleasure to have you. So let's just get on with it. What has been the reception to a virtual court since uh, this pandemic commenced? Okay, well, um, so far so good. Um, it's been received very well by the legal community, um, being the barristers that have been opportune, right, to interface with virtual hearings. Um, if I take a step back, we're coming from a situation where court hearings and court activities were more or less paralyzed by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we're also coming from a situation where, you know, um, the courts in this country for a long time um, had not fully adopted the need for virtual hearings and electronic filings, which, um, you know, were being progressed around the world. So it is the case that COVID-19 pandemic has thus, um, you know, more or less forced us Right to quickly adopt these, and um, you know some regul um, some some guidelines have come out, um, as well as practice directions relating to such virtual hearings. And um, I was opportune to actually um, attend a ruling, um, which which was by Zoom, and um, it was actually quite good. Um, the internet connection was great. Um, it was quite efficient. The registrar got everyone connected on time. And um, for me personally, one thing that I appreciated was the fact that um, I didn't have to go to the court, wait several hours before my ruling was called. I knew the time my ruling was going to be called. I logged in. Um, and I was able to go back to my business for the day. So um, I think it's a good first step, um, but we have to understand that we have not yet arrived. So what um, are some of these um, not yet yes. arrived um, uh, things that come to mind when it comes to challenges thus far? Because yes. I remember we had a conversation with a lawyer as well who talked about the fact that some lawyers, um, some legal practitioners have not, you know, yet embraced the technology. Some of them don't even have the app or Zoom on their phone. Some don't have smartphones. Are these same things you've observed or are there other challenges you are seeing? Well, those are challenges, um, but those are challenges that um, such lawyers themselves would have to surmount um, because it's a new age and these have become the tools of the trade. But um, the other challenges that I was looking at, um, number one, of course, um, the courts would have to migrate to their own platform, right? Um, aside from using Zoom, we all know about the hacking instances on Zoom. Um, these, these are bound to happen, and you don't want the judicial process to be compromised as a result. Another challenge for me is that um, we would have to make this more normalized. So for now, it still appears to be skeletal, um, you know, the number of cases that are coming up. I don't think the courts are still running at that full capacity. So um, that's that's something that we need to quote unquote normalize. Another thing we need to normalize is that we need to normalize um, a form of electronic filing such that um, you know the whole process from start to finish can be electronic. Um, I'll give the example of Malaysia. In Malaysia, while you still file court papers, um, for a long time, even before the pandemic started, everything is electronic, your filing is electronic, the judges are relying on electronic papers, um, you yourself are are relying on electronic papers. So those are some things that will need to be sorted out. Then I think as additionally as well, even while my experience was that the internet was great um, from the court, um, I know that there have been some hitches here and there where, you know, someone is straining to hear, I can't hear you, can you hear me, etc. Yeah, um, that, so, that's you know, a regular. We, we see. see it every time, even while we're here uh, talking Absolutely. with you. Okay, so let's, let's look at other aspects. Well, yes. jurisdiction, for instance, location um, in the law, uh, where a matter must be held at a particular state. 
Um, will there be a consideration for this since it's just a virtual uh, proceedings and different parties can be seen and heard? What, what is the, what the angle uh, are we going to take this from? Yes, um, I, I don't see that as being a problem. Um, when you're talking about jurisdiction, um, it's really about the jurisdiction of the court as against the jurisdiction of where the persons are. So if it's a matter that is the Ogun State High Court that has jurisdiction over a matter, then it's sufficient that um, you know I know that I am before the Ogun State Court, um, notwithstanding where I am dialing in from. Right, um, I need not dial in from Ogun State. Now, on the part of the judges, um, it's a different ballgame as to what their practice directions require. Is it the case that their practice direction requires them to be situated in the court premises when they're dialing into the video? That is then subject to the different states and what they want. But for the uh, proceedings that I have partaken in thus far, it's the case that the judge was dialing in from his courtroom. Right, it was clear that dialing in from his courtroom, and um, I think also for the um, you know confidentiality and um, the sanctity of the process, considering the fact that there are confidential files in court, um, you know judges' notes, etc. Um, I think to a large extent it's important that the judges dial in from their own um, specific court. <clears throat> All right, um, let's look at um, another aspect. A lot of weddings and ceremonies that require some sort of legality uh, had, have had to be postponed. But taking a cue from um, New York, the state of New York, um, it has legislated, it had to be legislated for weddings to be conferred uh, legality. What should be the case in Nigeria? Do you see us having virtual weddings that are legally binding? Yes, um, for you to have those virtual weddings that are legally binding, um, you would have to have legislation for that. Um, because as we all know, um, weddings in Nigeria is governed by the Marriage Act, right? And um, I think the Marriage Act specifies um, that a wedding can only be conducted or consummated, um, you know, in specified places, including um, a registry, um, and including um, a church, not only just a church, but a church who has been licensed for that purpose, right? Um, so it's the case that if we want to deviate, um, we would have to um, specifically legislate for that. But what I understand at the moment is that um, what tends to happen is that um, people still have their weddings at the specified designated places under the law, um, but just make it available online for you know their well wishes to be able to participate via Zoom, which is not a problem. All right, Michelle, thank you very much for your thoughts on the news. It's appreciated.